Welcome to Voices of the Ancestors, where we explore Georgian polyphonic songs and the women who sing them. Hello, this is Holly here, and welcome to Series 2, Episode 5 of Voices of the Ancestors podcast. Now, today's episode is all about the stories of Svaneti. And you might remember in the previous episode, we heard from the Chamgeliani singing sisters who live in this high, remote mountain region of Georgia called Svaneti. Well, they had so many stories to tell because Svaneti is just full of ancient myths and legends. So we decided to dedicate a whole episode to them. And Susan and I have invited our friend Annalee Wilson to be a guest co-host on this episode because she's been there and heard these stories too. So I'm stepping back and looking forward to hearing the stories that Susan and Annalee are going to bring us today. I'll be listening along with you excitedly. So enjoy. Thank you, Holly, and welcome to you all. The voices today are me, Susan Thompson, Madonna Chamgiliani, and we're also going to be joined by members from Ensemble Lalcor that cherish all things span. We'll hear from the founder, Lika Lipateliani, along with two members of the group, Vanda Bakoradze and Bakuri Mukbaniani. And as Holly mentioned, we have a guest co-host today, Annalie, who is a singer, songwriter, actor, and most importantly, lover of Georgian folk music. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me, Susan. And it's been really heartwarming to delve back into some of the stories and songs that we discovered on our trip to Svaneti, especially the hunting myth that Madonna Chamgaliani told around the bonfire in that massive thunderstorm, which we'll hear <laughs> later in the episode. Oh, yes, that was the story with the goddess Dali. And dear listeners, if you want to catch every nuance of our guests and translators speaking English with Georgian, Svenetian and French accents, there's a full transcript of the episode on the Voices of the Ancestors website. So you can download and read along or check bits later. Yes, and there's a further complication, isn't there? Because the Svan language is actually different to the Georgian language. So <laughs> we had some interesting moments with the translators. Oh, yes. Now, the first person you're going to hear from is a young woman called Vanda. We'd arranged to meet at the Ethnographic Outdoor Museum in Tbilisi. I learned that she was born in Lower Svaneti and moved to Tbilisi for education. Now, Lower Svaneti is just as remote as Upper Svaneti. It would take her about six hours non-stop driving to get back home. And she's going to set the scene for us now. This is uh, like a history. Uh, like we, when we are learning and uh, searching old songs, that we understand other things also because the songs have history, you know, like text and like melody. Like now we live in different world, right? Mm. Everything is different. And when we um, uh, searching the old songs, we feel that uh, past energy, like uh, how, what kind of our ancestors were, and they live very strong, like nature and the songs today it's everything changed right you can go from one place to another by car or something that they it was not in the past they uh, they were struggling like it was really hard especially in Swaneti mountains mm-hmm. my living was really hard and we feel that hardness in the song when we sing Wow, there's so much, even in that short excerpt, isn't there? And listening to Vanda talking about the hardness that we feel through the songs, it really took me back to that moment in Svaneti when we were listening to Madonna Chamgeliani telling this amazing story about her grandmother and the Tuneri. And it was with Zoe Perry who was on the trip with us. She was translating it. So imagine it was really difficult my, for my grandmother, especially because uh, at that time they were considered as an enemy. Yes, and mm-hmm. family, uh, en- uh, the family was enemy of mm. the communists. Mm-hmm. <coughs> 
So she, she, she appeared to be in such a uh, difficult situation with, he, with her uh, five children when, when her uh, husband, husband died, right? Ulaze meta de Hamins Shayla Buddha Tahmara Buddha Teda Sampola Fushi, or some of the people is Kalishuli. The only person who could uh, uh, more or less help her were, was her oldest ch child, who was uh, like a daughter, her daughter, mm. 13 years old. But uh, this daughter uh, became sick. Nobody understood why what happened. No, Mugret Machinal Pakatsek Metida So of course there was no doctor and it was a um, well, she, she, she had to die, so uh, before uh, she was dying, she asked her mother to sing a, a song, a lullaby. <laughs> lost her husband, right, and her oldest child, uh, uh, child. So my my father remembers how um, every time she would cry over these uh, two dear persons, she would take the tune and she would cry. So she took it because she wanted to, because actually she was crying and she wanted her children to think that they are that she is singing. <laughs> um, and uh, one day she, he thought, uh, my mother, father thought that it was because of the Juniri that she was, uh, <laughs> she was crying, so he thought, okay, I want to break this Juniri, and actually he broke it down. <laughs> That was the Chemgaliani sisters singing Nanila. So we have some more voices for you today. I caught up with a couple of people at a very special moment at the Folk Centre in Tbilisi. It was the morning after the very first concert by Ensemble Lalcor. Now they're a fairly young ensemble, they've only been going a couple of years and Lika told me, that's Lika Lipartelliani, the founder, how when she started for the first year I think it was an all-female group and then she saw the opportunity to work more widely with the Svan community and the group now welcomes men. It's a really large group, there are about 30 singers on stage of all different generations. Now Lika is a striking woman, very softly spoken, with black, black hair and twinkling eyes. She created Ensemble Lalcor to bring the Svan life into Tbilisi. Music, dancing, speaking in the Svan language. And when I asked her to tell me, who is Lika? She very soon started talking about her grandmother. Lika was joined by Givi Potti, also a wonderful singer, who very kindly translated for us. <laughs> so my grandma was most interesting and 
tragic person at the same time. She was uh, uh, widowed, uh, 33 years old, with seven kids. Uh, and she raised all of them in a way that she was a pillar of the uh, family and uh, she was all the time taking care of all of them and putting them together all the time. And uh, I remember her uh, hands uh, and uh, these hands were very um, dry and thin. Uh, like skinny yeah. uh, because she was working all the time hard and uh, when and, uh, I can compare this hand to the um, branches of the trees without leaves and when she was uh, praying like the, it was uh, very mem it is very memorable uh, scene for me because I uh, I um, how to say I met God with her hands I met God with her hands. I was so struck by this phrase. And it put me in mind of one of my favourite songs of all time, which is Grandma's Hands by Bill Withers. <laughs> and the very first line of that song is, Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. And it, it got me thinking about something I've noticed about all aspects of Svan culture. Is It's very embodied. Mm. And, and here you have this sense that spirituality is embodied too it's not yeah. separate yeah and madonna also had her own story about embodied spirituality and here's zoe translating for madonna again one day uh, when uh, it was uh, the feast day of course the uh, villagers went up to that uh, church to Tarini. Like always on mm -hmm. this day. And these monks who were living there at that moment uh, started to uh, prohibit it and say, like, this is not right, you should not do that. Why are you dancing? If you want to dance, you, would, you better go to a nightclub. <laughs> Actually, here, even if you don't have all like very good dancers or whatever. Uh, this spirituality that you can uh, feel uh, through this uh, as this band dance is much higher than uh, when you hear other ensembles not from here performing these uh, um, songs and dance. And now Lika remembers her grandmother dancing. <laughs> Kettle was uh, taken to the uh, mountains yeah. in the summertime for yeah. several months. So mm -hmm. it was quite uh, hard work. And uh, during this process, like people uh, were working really, really hard. And but at the evening times, when they were uh, resting or having time, they were getting together. We called sweepy. So the sweep is a place uh, where, where village is uh, sitting together okay. at the free time uh -huh. and talking and uh, singing mm -hmm. and dancing. So uh, this process was really, really alive and the ladies who were uh, some kind of, how to say, very tough ladies and hardworking ladies, they were uh, like... Uh, Sometimes they were jumping on the rocks like a, uh, <laughs> mountain goats, yeah. but uh, simultaneously they could transform very soft, flowery, flowery <laughs> kind of ladies who were dancing really, really great dances, which was like straight forward, going straight forward, uh -huh. and then coming back like uh, like the moves she yes. uh, doing, yes. and this little steps which were uh, uh, art 
something special, like uh, you could uh, think that say when it's tapping <laughs> at all, like yeah. le- uh, levitating. Le- <laughs> le- le- <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Here's Vanda talking about the perhuli, the round dance. Uh, it's one year I'm doing perhuli. <laughs> First, uh-huh. I can't even imagine that I can do it uh, like when I go in, uh, to the uh, okay. sample. I thought, what, what is this? I can't even do it. <laughs> it was really hard. But when uh-huh. I learned first one after, it was, oh my God, let's do the perhuli. I was like, it's because when you are singing and doing this together, it's like really connected and um, like fast you are doing oh my god <laughs> crazy yes firstly it was like sing and do this together yes. how can I concentrate on uh-huh. uh-huh. learning but after like without this was this is so lovely to hear you say this so you learnt you've learnt to sing and dance together one year ago yes, yes. And so I'm for I'm trying to yeah yeah and for Bakuri what is it is like because you've been doing this since you were a toddler <laughs> Bakuri grew up in Lower Svaneti and is from a long lineage of singers Zamagari, Zamagari, what a great phrase. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Thinks that without it, uh, he can't even live. It's like the, I'm feeling like this. If I can't have this, I can't even live. Yeah. This song and the distance, all, all of this. So I can like choose. I can leave most of things like this. You can leave most of things behind, yeah, yes. but not this. Not this. Wow. And for, to throw in my feeling, for some, when I've been singing and dancing together, and in Spinetti even, yeah. there's a feeling that by when you go round in that circle that you're moving something else. Yes. It's not just your body and the people yes. around you. Yeah, the whole, whole body it is. Yeah. You're giving, uh, like by hands, you're giving energy and whole, mm-hmm. all your sonetti giving others. Yes. And they are giving others and it's like something crazy. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, like I always say, there's feel on your hands, when no, not just sing, not just yes. like doing perfectly, feel from your hands to each other, <laughs> and give them like energy. <laughs> So, as he explained, that like, it's really different when you are singing in your home, you're feeling more free and not comfortable, and the mountains and the um, place gives you a different energy. And I, if, why I'm thinking about when, when he was speaking, and I think. It's about, like, I did not sing in Swahili, but I am speaking in Swahili, it's the same, right? When I'm speaking in uh, talking, it's almost in Swahili, here, it's like different, different. And when I'm in my home and I'm speaking in Swan, it's uh, <laughs> like a free dimension that you feel really different. Yeah, yeah so, so, so the nature gives uh, the Swan person, g- gave the Swan person that kind of streak and like whole thing, and that's why, of course, it will be different when you're singing in your nature. And, Indeed, mountains because it's so so, so help. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have traditions about the nature and the, how um, it's changing, weather is changing, and there are days you can't do something for because weather was really important for us because we are doing uh, we have like potatoes and things mm. we eat products we have there. So um, there are days you can't um, do anything with um, ground. You can't even uh, take from the ground like flower or anything because it uh, brings you. Like bad uh, 
Bad luck? Yes, bad uh, weather. Bad weather, oh, yes. okay. We also, there are praying days when you are especially praying about weather. The sun is like Lille and Marsh, for sure. Uh-huh. The moon is really, was really important, I mean, mm. also on whole, our day life. When you, when you are starting a new business or new thing, uh, my father and aunt always saying that, let's see what kind of moon today it is. And it's for uh-huh. Hello, this is Holly again. I'm really loving hearing these stories from Svenetti along with you and I just wanted to pause to acknowledge the reason we're able to bring you these songs and stories from Georgia because it wouldn't be possible without our patrons and Kofi supporters. So thank you if you support us on Kofi on Patreon and if this podcast enriches your life in any way and you appreciate the thought and time and energy that we pour into it, please consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash Voices of the Ancestors or ko-fi.com forward slash Voices of the Ancestors so that we can keep telling these stories that just really want to be heard. All right, back to the episode. Hunting was their like meal important because we are living in mountains mm-hmm. and in the past was not like ways to mm-hmm. come like other products and the hunting was like, really important for the families. So um, the, there was a special days which days you like uh, chose for go there uh-huh. and uh, um, not everyone can go for hunting. It needs experience like the uh, anything you go when you go like the shoes and things mm-hmm. like you need to have and. The experience is really important. Would would the hunters be walking or would they be riding horses? Mm. Yes, and, mm, both. Both. Okay. Yeah. Has Bakuri so depends ever, what kind of uh, have you been is. hunting? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. You've been hunting too, Vanda. <laughs> oh, I tell. I want to hear what what did you catch? That's your goraris. So I'm beer. 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 Bear. Yeah, bear. You yeah. caught a bear? Yeah. Not me, da- but da- we da- was who we yes. was. Yes, da- that's me. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's huge. They like um, catch it by uh, not like hunt or something. They catch a it. trap. Yes, a trap. <gasps> and uh, it was it, the trap was with the uh, tree, and uh, he, he the, it was like really angry and uh, like almost t- took them from th- that tree from. The wow. <laughs> yeah. I was little, like eight or nine years. So I remember when we were in Svaneti that one of the characters that came up a lot was this goddess called Dali. Yeah. And we heard lots of stories about her and we even learned a song called Bail Betkil, yeah. in which she features. Mm-hmm. And I remember very particularly that Madonna saved the story of this song for a special evening where we walked a little bit out of the village mm-hmm. into just wild <laughs> nature, completely pitch black. Yeah. And there was this bonfire set up and there were people yeah. gathered around the fire. Yeah. And Madonna proceeded to tell us this story. And then there was this massive thunderstorm oh, yeah. going on. And we were <laughs> sitting by this fire listening to this story about this goddess and the rain was pouring down or yeah. crashes of thunder and lightning. And, and it was just so atmospheric. It One was. of the most memorable experiences I had while I was in Spanish. Yeah. And do you remember there was that great big dog? And I think we can even hear the panting as long as, <laughs> as well as the fire and the thunder. You can hear the dog on this recording, Anna Lee. I do not remember the dog, Susan. I don't remember. Seriously? It. No, I don't. I've got, no. I can't. Wow, I'm I, surprised. No. You know, isn't it, isn't it funny how we all remember such yeah. different things? And that yeah, is yeah. precisely why stories evolve in such different ways every time. <laughs> so true. So true. Now we're going to hear some of that story told by Madonna around the fire, preceded by a clip from the song by El Betkil, sung by Anna Chamgaliani, Zoe Perry, and Givi Pirtskaliani from the Latali Singers. <laughs> Dali has uh, golden hair. She's absolutely beautiful. So she's the goddess, uh, she, she's a protector of uh, 
um, animals yeah. who live in the mountains. Shira daris khod me rom isaris nadiro bis kaukmeti rom eli taris martali. Often you can read somewhere that she's the goddess of uh, uh, like hunters and hunts, but it's not true. But kaum ela misit khovelis mokulis tuis dali. Because when anyone uh, kills an animal, actually she suffers a lot. Uh, she can uh, fall in love like any person. <laughs> she also uh, suffers from um, giving birth like all women. So she really looks like a woman, she just has one difference. She cannot uh, forgive. So that's why she, she could not uh, be a part of the... Uh, she, she, she cannot be a Christian goddess. Uh, so uh, as I was saying, uh, most of the, like almost all the gods and goddesses uh, from Svan paganism were um, replaced by Christian Christian uh, uh, saints. But Dali could not be replaced because uh, Christianity or Christianity is very important the forgiveness, yeah, which she cannot uh, do. So Dali is uh, looks like a uh, like the mountain, yeah? The mountain doesn't forgive you. If you made a mistake, uh, you, you can die. So uh, for Dali is like real like a mountain. So when I met Vander and Bakuri, of course I asked them about Dali and I got a different aspect of the Dali myth and a different song, which we heard in the concert. Until uh, men school will go there hunting, they were praying uh, for Dali that mm -hmm. gave us like uh, success for our hunting. Uh, Dali was like, um, which, uh, it, there are um, many myths about that. Mm -hmm. He, she was um, like cho choosing the hunter, mm -hmm. and then uh, gave an exam, mm -hmm. like different kinds of maybe uh, he, she like uh, she be um, ox, white ox, like change uh, her things ah, and be white. Her appearance, yes. and she would yes, show one. herself as a white ox. White ibex, an ibex, ibex, yes. Sorry. So and um, hunter, uh, like it's really beautiful. You are going hunting, but hunter can't kill. Okay. Any kind of, uh, he wants to kill, but can't kill because it's uh, he knows that it's uh, like Dali's exam. But ah. um, most of the person maybe like he and, and kills, and mm -hmm. after uh, he falls from the rocks and mountains and dies or something. Oh no. <laughs> yes. But if he like. I can't kill, okay, Dal, I know you are, and I'll pray, continue praying, and I will not kill this mm, animal, uh, go, and after, uh, Dal gives some success, and uh, uh, yeah. I will explain what Dal Ekojors Khelwajare, it's uh, the song, it has a really text, yes. and it's happening, it's right like this, Dal Ekojors Khelwajare means Dal is uh, giving birth yes. in the mountains, uh -huh. and uh, up on his head there are birds flying, and down or there are wolves like uh, screaming yes. and watching and so Dali uh, is giving birth uh, night and um, day all night and day mm -hmm. this kind of text mm -hmm. is like Khelwajara it's really uh, important word because uh, it's it's giving a birth it means giving a birth it, it means giving birth okay. by swan in yes, swan in swan okay. but it's not uh, it's concretic it means uh, uh, male not uh, female okay so the word it contains uh, like male <coughs> But he's, you know, she's giving birth. It's no matter it's male or female. The whole world means that giving birth. Mm. But like concretically, in the world there is male. <laughs> like wow. Which part of the word? Uh, Chovaj. Chovaj. Wow. 
okay. And you are playing Changi? Yes. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will you sing a little bit for us? So he was a hunter that killed uh, the favorite Jihu is like a mountain goat. Yeah. Mountain goat. She's asking if do you want to go home? No, but I'm not going to go home. Oh, the moglets. No, I'm not going to go home. No, I'm not going to go home. So, of course, she got very upset because uh, someone uh, killed her mountain goat. Mm -hmm. So, she meets this Betkil. But Betkil was very handsome. <laughs> So she tells uh, Betki, okay, I can be either your mother, your sister, or your lover. And 90% of the hunters, when she asks this question, they will say, of course, I want to be your lover. So every time she says, okay, you can be my lover, but there is one condition that you should not betray me. Oh dear. But <laughs> it's the nature of men that everyone is a betrayer. <laughs> 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 And so when um, so with Betkil, for example, she gives him her uh, scissors, uh, which is uh, the only thing that uh, that allows him to cut her hair, uh, and actually all her power is in her hair. So, so basically, she uh, by this action, the, the 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 hunter, the simple hunter, becomes. Mepes uh, artist becomes a, a king because she <coughs> basically gives offers her uh, life. <laughs> so of course, uh, Betkil falls in love with a with another woman. <laughs> And suddenly he loses uh, the scissors. Rota bet kill madane ba manadi roba stavi. Uko temi khude botan, sopeli khude botan. Roman ragatsa shetsto madaushua daltan. When um, Betkil stopped hunting, the whole village started to understand that he made some kind of mistake with Dali. Mm. 
და ერთხელაც სოფლის მოედანზე იყო ესეთი შეკრება ანუ ფერფულში დგას სიმღერაში არის ეს მომენტი ფერფულში დგას ყველა so in a in the 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 song that we actually learned there is a feast in the village everywhere everyone is in a circle gathered in a circle ta utsvat shemoxteba tetri archui and as um, and suddenly um, arrives a white archui romelia white animal i'm not sure what it is tis tkha she says a um, mountain goat so but it's not the same as the, the one we said before the archui ari dedali blemboni da mamali achi har vakhom ah so it's a female one the other was the male goat that pekheb shoris gaudroba betkhe and you remember that behind be, between the legs he come he he ran ari shekitkho ami me gwechi ar gwe so in the song you can uh, hear the, the the question who is going to uh, follow and temi temi swams kitwas vin gaqweba magas da ikwe pasukhobs twiton ve ratkma unda betkili so the whole village uh, asked the question who is going to who has to follow this um, goat and the same the village uh, answers the question of course it, it's betkil anu qelas maits shishi konda dalis radgan tu da ashavebdi avtsobrat pasuki unda ego da amashaves everyone was afraid of uh, dali because they knew that if they made a mistake then uh, they had to be responsible for it and dali would be very angry ho itsodnen ro betkili ho nu mogleb betkil ma twiton itsoda ro ver ver gadarchebota tsadia betkil knew already his mistake and he knew that uh, he couldn't uh, avoid this uh, judgment let's say ukurebs betkili qals tsin midis es tsqoveli so he has to go and he, he follows this uh, animal this happens in winter tsin ro ukurebs qali chans ukan moikhedavs da kreba so he he goes and he follows this uh, uh, le pas the, the, the steps the steps what what yeah the foot what the footprints the footprints so front in front of him he can see the the footprints of the animal but if he goes uh in the back he cannot see them anymore so this animal uh, takes him to a kind of cave and of course in this cave uh, is dali who asks him where is my scissor <laughs> you lost the scissor so you know how you will end tan twiton uqu tan uqars tan dastiris magram ra sheudia patiyetvi tsali fekhi ta khelit gamukida kaldeze ram dekhas unda gathet archeni bekhoi um so she she takes a bed kill and she hold her, him with one hand and one uh, leg uh, on above the um, cliff yes precipice cliff but at the same time of course she cries because she loved him but she cannot forgive <laughs> მოგლეთ ეს ბეთქილი რა ჩამოკიდებული რამდენხანს გაჩერდებოდა ახლა მაგრამ არ მოშ მიპოვა მისმა ძაღლმა ყურშა ბეთქილი იპოვა ძაღლმა ბეთქილი იპოვა უკვე არა ყველაზე ჩამოკიდებული ბეთქილი so ბეთქილი is still on this cliff uh, about to to fall uh, and uh, his um, his dog found him So you see there was a dog in the story as well as by the fire. Susan, you're totally right and I forgot both of those things because <laughs> there was actually a whole other song wasn't there about Betkill mm. in dialogue with his dog. Oh my god, yes. But we didn't learn that one. No. No, we didn't. 
And um, we never did find out the end of the story properly. No, because the thunderstorm was so intense that we had to all pack up everything and head back to the house. Ah, that's it. Well, I did do a bit of digging to see if I could find the end in, you know, in a written form. Mm -hmm. And I did find some more Stan beings, not Dali, but some other creatures. So are there any evil spirits in Svanetti? Evil spirits? Maybe it's like Chinka. It's kind of evil spirit. Mm, it's um, like a small ugly thing <laughs> okay <laughs> came uh, in the night times mm. and uh, scaring people who is like they are going somewhere <laughs> but it has like a, a own period that period just that period appears like in time Ah. Yeah, in November. Yeah, in November. Okay. We also have the special days, and there we think that they scare from iron, iron, iron. Like they're scared of iron. Iron. How can I say it in a word? Iron. It's not a, a metal. Yeah, metal. The metal. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. that the metal. They scare from metals. Also. Okay. And that period, uh, home, in home and on windows, we are doing, we are putting um, some kind of metal for Okay. Like safety. So you might look put a metal cooking pot. Yes, perhaps. maybe any any metal. Okay. Uh-huh. It was like kind of legend. If uh, that chinka goes to the mountains uh, and rocks, it's like uh, will be good weather weather for ah. us. And if it like goes down, someone saw that goes down to the river, it will be like bad. Mm, like re- it will be rains. Okay. Um, they so they yeah. have prognosis <laughs> their they, own prognosis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're weather forecasters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean this prognosis you're a bit. And I think I've read there are Devi who mm. are evil, but they are they're in the mountains, but where there's a sheer drop of a, a gorge or something. Is that something in Svanetti? Do yes. you have Devi? Yes. Um, yes. Devi we have, which was like a strong evil creature, yes. It was mm. huge, and, uh, huge, and, like a head and something. was living mostly in mountains and forests, and sometimes like going to villages and kidnapping the per- persons there. Ah, okay. Know, legends, yeah. So more like a giant. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, every evening uh, in my home, when I was trying now, t- today is a little bit life changing. Mm. We had like talking, we are sitting uh, together as a family, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, my father or aunt, or aunt who is living with us like was um, t- telling their stories uh, in the past. Things. Uh-huh. Mostly I don't remember, but I remember the process. We are sitting and we are hearing that it was all the stories. Like, um, like kind of thing. Yes. Uh, I have also video recording that my uncle was, um, and that, that that process was, and my uncle was um, sharing uh, histories mm-hmm. uh, how about scary things like ah. chingas also. There was uh-huh. also um, how was came, the how was happened, and uh-huh. I think it was a little bit scary. But <laughs> <laughs> it was really interesting. So I heard from them. Yes. Here's Givi translating for Lika. Yes, we're living on the edge, like of reality uh, and uh, miss mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And yes, we are part of this real world, but uh, I believe in every dimension of uh, this life. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm standing here on the ground, but uh, I believe in Dali, I believe in uh, other gods uh, and uh, goddesses, uh, which are part of my life and uh, part of my tradition and culture in which I'm raised and if it's not true, I don't care, still, <laughs> it is uh, very beautiful <laughs> to, to have this kind of stories and this kind of myths around us. What does Voices of the Ancestors mean to you? 
I have connection in the past with them, uh, not just because I have their blood and my ancestors. I just real, it's just real connection. Like I really feel when I sing and when I think about that, like it's so great thing when you have connection with the past, like in reality, not just like thinking and something. Uh -huh. So it's like connection which is not stopping from yes. the past and cause and cause and maybe it's their circle, maybe it's mm. unstoppable line, but. <laughs> Oh, it's really great feeling. That connection that she's talking about, yeah. that's what I feel when I sing these songs. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that it's not my blood ancestors. Mm. You know, it makes me think that as non-Georgians coming to Georgia, singing this music, feeling it in our bodies and transmitting it further, we become part of that unstoppable line. We become part of the ancestors for the next generation. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and I was uh, just listening to that again. I mean, it, she said that, honestly, we'd been sat down a couple of minutes and normally I save that question right till the end of an interview, but it was like, oh, wow, we're in Georgia, we were talking with swans, just reality, myth, everything's in front of you right now. And, and that just came out of her, that unstoppable line, or is it a circle? Yeah, that's right. It's just, <laughs> it's so present. The past is present. Yeah, and when when I think about the circle, I just think about the pehuli. Mm. You know that round dance, that ritual. Of course, you feel it when you're dancing because it's in the body. Yeah, it's an expression of everything that's yeah. past, present, yeah. and future. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I'm going to tell you something from from last night. So last night I was at a concert of Georgian stuff in the UK, and I was looking down from above, and this whole room was dancing in circles so it was a merry merry dancing in this case but they got all the audience up they told them to put their chairs to one side and they just made circles and circles and circles got everybody to hold hands and the energy was extraordinary just you know nobody in that audience had come to dance and yet there they were dancing at the end yeah the power of this music to bring people together is just electrifying you know it doesn't you don't have to understand the words to understand the words. Like the Span language is something so deep and so primal that resonates. And when you have the, the dance as well, it's just like you just become part of this big human family. I really just want to show people how much I love this and they will feel, I, I think, every person, like anything you are doing in your life, my philosophy is like this, anything you are doing, you need to do by love and uh, you need to feel it and uh, others just, you don't need to do something really important, others really feel when you are doing something by passion and by love. You know that when you love your uh, homeland, you don't need to talk about that, you, you need to act. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to act. And now I'm crying, this is ridiculous, <laughs> and you're crying. <laughs> Translator is not. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Voices of the Ancestors with guest host Annalie Wilson and Susan Thompson. Our guests were Madonna Cemgiliani with Zoe Pere translating, Rika Lipateliani with Givi Potti translating, and Bakuri Mukbaniani with Vanda Bakuradze, both translating and speaking as herself. The meetings with our guests Lika, Bakuri, Vanda through many different audio challenges. So I'm very grateful to Snowline Media for solving those technical issues so that we could bring you this episode. Now, we are not academic ethnomusicologists or people who study stories and myths. So we'll signpost you to some books in the show notes, if that's your kind of thing. If you were interested to visit Georgia, you could go to the resources page of our website www.voicesoftheancestors.co.uk where you'll find information about all the tours that we know of happening in Georgia. While you are on the website, you can support us by visiting our donate page 
And you can find a transcript of this episode and all our episodes. Some of the music in this episode came from Lalcor's very first solo concert. And we can share that with you if you go to the Voices of the Ancestors YouTube channel, where there's a video of the whole concert. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh.